It's really a pleasure to be here today. And I'm so pleased to see how the climate ecosystem here in Israel is getting so, such a strong momentum. So I'm Nadal Steinmetz. I'm the founder and CEO of Nomea. We are a UK-based climate tech fund that invests in transformative climate tech companies in the UK, in Europe, but also here in Israel that advance the transition to net zero emissions. We invest in both early and late stage companies, and we're looking to help them grow into becoming massively profitable and impactful enterprises. So I have arrived in Tel Aviv yesterday morning from London, where my wife and I have been living for the past two years. Probably most of you guys know this, but we had a really hot summer in London. On July 19th, just about two months ago, temperatures in the UK has hit over 40 degrees. This was the hottest recorded day in the history of the UK. Can you believe it? The previous one was three years ago, on July 2019. So I think for the Israelis in the crowd, it might not seem very high, but relative to the UK, it's extremely unusual. Most public transportation and homes in the UK are devoid of cooling systems. So the UK government has announced a national emergency. The UK Met Office has asked people to stay indoors all of this had a real economic impact, and the same extreme heat wave that we've experienced in the UK has taken place all over Europe. So as you can hear, I'm really concerned about climate change, but at the same time, I'm deeply excited about technologies and about the role of innovation in leading the way to net zero emissions. So today, first of all, it's gonna be quite quick, but today I'll speak about climate tech investments, the landscape, innovation, and the path to net zero. Let me start by stating the obvious. Innovation alone is not enough. Climate change and reaching net zero by mid-century is a multifaceted challenge that will require us, other society, to address this from many different angles. So from policy, to politics, to regulation, to advocacy groups, but also innovation. I'm talking about technologies that are both economically viable and can cut emissions in scale. So we'll use a few statistics. The first one is worth paying attention to because it's extremely interesting. Based on the latest report of BCG, existing technologies can cut global emissions by up to 65%. What are those technologies? We're talking about solar and wind that on a per kilowatt hour today are already cheaper than the fossil fuel counterparts. The cost of solar and wind went down 90% and 72% respectively in the last decade. Huge achievement. We're talking about batteries, an area that I'm extremely passionate about. The cost of lithium ion batteries went down 87% in the past 10 years. We're talking about electric vehicles. The price of electric vehicles are very close to price parity oh, with internal combustion engine cars. So all of those technologies and others, we have to scale and we can cut global emissions by up to 65%. But on the flip side of things, what happens with the remaining 35% of global emissions? This is mostly related to what is called areas that are hard to abate 
or in simple terms, things in our economy that are extremely hard to decarbonize. Things like long-haul transportation or heavy industry. Long-haul transportation, we're talking about trucking, shipping, aviation. Aviation, for example, for those in the crowd who are thinking of taking a flight, a transatlantic flight from Tel Aviv to New York, I have serious doubts whether in the future it will be able to be powered by batteries. The physics, the energy density may not be enough. The weight of the battery will be heavier than the plane itself. So we have to innovate and invest in alternative solutions like green hydrogen or sustainable aviation fuel, for example. Same thing with heavy industry. Things like the production of cement or steel. Another mind-blowing statistic, cement production alone is responsible for 8% of total greenhouse gases. Can you imagine? Only cement. Why is it so hard to produce zero carbon cement? The reason is quite simple. In cement production, we use limestone. As limestone decomposes, it releases CO2 into the atmosphere. So it's not just the heating that is required, it's also the chemical compound. So we need more scientists, more entrepreneurs, and more purpose-driven founders focusing on those problems. Another statistic. I looked at last year's numbers, and based on last year's numbers, only 2% of the total investments that came from venture capital into climate tech went to pre-seed and seed. 98% of capital went to Series A and onwards. Huge funding gap. Only 2%. Think about the number of great ideas that don't get funding. We at Nomea, we recognize this massive opportunity in the early stage, and we're looking to do much more. So yes, I think that climate change is the biggest challenge of our generation. The biggest. But at the same time, it's also an investment opportunity that amounts to trillions of dollars. Experts, economists, they estimate that from now and in the next 30 years until 2050, there will have to be invested $150 trillion. $5 trillion every year for the next 30 years. Let's say they're wrong. They exaggerate. It will end up being three trillion dollars, one and a half trillion dollars. This is still massive amounts of capital that will create many opportunities. That's why I'm convinced that many companies, not just one or ten, but many of them, that offer products or services that will enable, or even better, accelerate global decarbonization will become extremely valuable to the world's economy. So I'm super happy to be here, and it's exciting what's happening here in Israel in the climate tech ecosystem. There's over 700 companies. There's so many important lessons in climate tech that we should look at what happened here in cyber or in fintech and apply it to climate. The Israeli chutzpah, the collaborative approach, the entrepreneurial spirit are all extremely important and should be applied to climate. So if Israel was startup nation before that turned into cyber nation, 
The next big thing, Israel needs to be a climate tech nation. Very briefly, I'll share with you two investments from our portfolio that we've made in Israeli companies that we think are extremely promising. The first, first Airborne. I think they're somewhere here today. I can see them now. First Airborne provides remote, automated airborne services to both on and offshore wind turbines. Wind energy is responsible for about 6% of the electricity in 2020, but we understand the trends shifting away from fossil fuels to renewables, and we understand that the growth is going to be tremendous. Their technology, with a cutting-edge IP, allows developers to track the performance of their wind farms with real-time data and no additional cost. The turbines are getting taller and taller. The blades are even reaching 140 meters. So we need scalable technologies that allows developers to understand how each turbine is performing, that provides both on-demand inspection and maintenance, and with a constant flow of information, allow developers to make better decisions. They've signed major contracts in Europe, and they're scaling very well. Another Israeli company that is also here today is Climate Crop. Climate Crop's technology unlocks the full potential of photosynthesis by enhancing the ability of crops to absorb sunlight and grow faster, store more energy and therefore more carbon, and most importantly, produce higher yields. Powered by decades of R&D in the Weizmann Institute, the Climate Crops team have generated outstanding returns. They were able to increase the yield of potatoes, tomatoes, canola, and other crops by between 25 to 90 percent. This is unheard of. In a world where 50 percent of all habitable land is dedicated to agriculture, if you can produce more on a per hectare basis, it has a huge climate potential. The world's population is expected to reach 10 billion by mid-century, up from 8 billion today, so they can address both food security and slash agricultural emissions. So both of those companies, Climate Crop and First Airborne, are here today. So go find them afterwards, and they'd be happy to tell you more, both about their technology and about their climate impact. So to finish up, I'm an optimist by nature, and I hope I'm not going to upset some of you in the crowd, but I think the net zero is possible. I think the net zero is achievable. Going from emitting 51 billion tons of greenhouse gases every year, as we do today, to zero or net zero in less than 30 years is ambitious. But I have immense trust in human creativity and in our ability to innovate and come together. There are also four objective reasons to be optimistic. The first, net zero commitments are getting bigger and bigger. Governments, corporations, companies, big and small, are announcing the net zero targets. Second, climate legislation is getting much better. We've all seen in the news the $370 billion Inflation Reduction Act. That's an important climate and tax bill that will give long-term incentives to climate tech companies. Third, 
I'm so happy. I was walking around before with Johnny and with others, and I saw so many young faces. And I think us, the young generation, care deeply about climate change. And we're going to make sure that world leaders care as much as we do. On a personal note, before I finish up, it's been exciting times for me personally. My wife and I are expecting our first daughter next month. <laughs> Becoming a father for the first time makes me contemplate and wonder in what kind of a world will she, where she will live at and her generation. It adds a great sense of urgency and responsibility to what we're doing at Nomea and the understanding that we have to act at an unprecedented speed and scale. I wonder how often will she experience those heat waves that we had in the UK and in what intensity or frequency. I can only hope, and this is my wish, that years from now, I will sit with her at some point and I can look at her in the eyes and tell her that myself and our generation did our best to avoid a climate disaster. Thank you very much, guys.